everybody. Good afternoon, morning, or evening. We're going to talk about something really good today, which is the race to break in the world record. All right. It's between Jakob Ingebrigtsen and Athing Mo. Or should I say Athing Mo and Jakob Ingebrigtsen? Because that's the order of which alphabetically they go in by first name. But anyway, welcome everybody here. We're going to be talking about these two heavyweights. They are some really rock star people. And I'm, I just can't over exaggerate that enough. They are some really rock star individuals because yeah, they, wow. The, what they're doing now, a thing Mo is about within about just over two seconds within the world record. Right. And then Jakob Inga Britson is about within three plus seconds or two plus seconds of the world record. They're both under three seconds in the world record. Obviously, a thing Mo is more so in the 800. So it's going to be harder to knock that off than it is in a longer race where the 1500 is 326 flat. And obviously that uh, 1500 record is by Hisham El Garouj. We're going to cover the women's record right here, which is held by Jamila Krotochevalova, uh, that 153.28, right? We're going to cover A-Thing Mo first. All right. Here you go. We're on the uh, 800 rankings uh, here on World Athletics. Hey, look, a lot of people didn't realize that there was a U-20 championship going on. Look, go to worldathletics.org. You really uh, maybe sign up for their newsletter and everything. But other than that, I'm going to be here to try to update you on all types of things. There's the U-20 championships, the U-18 championships. Just assume that every time they have a major senior championship with the seniors, I have the how they have the world championships, assume until proven otherwise that they have one for the youth or juniors because they have something called NACAC, NACAC which is the North American something, I think. Um, I forgot what the CAC stands for. Then they got the CAC, Pan American Games, European Championships, Oceania or uh, Commonwealth Games. They have a whole bunch of different championships to keep you entertained with track and field because sometimes, hey, maybe somebody's not an Olympic or world champion, but they can be a Commonwealth Games champion, which is basically the British uh, Commonwealth. Or they could be a European championship or they could be the Pan American which sometimes has the Olympians show up there. I would rather not see all of the top Olympians there because I think a game like that, unless they were like extremely injured, I think that should be left for the athletes that may be uh, what some call as a B tier. And that that's like, hey, I want to see everybody else. Yeah, you weren't in that top uh, maybe six or seven, maybe 10. Hey, show up here. Or maybe you were in the top 10, but you couldn't get those top three or four spots. Show up to that championship. You get what I'm saying? So last thing before I get into today's topic, check this out. Now, everybody knows about Mujinga Kambunji, right? From Switzerland. Yeah. So, you know, she got a younger sister. Oh, wait a minute. That's a thing, Mo. You know, she got a, I don't know why that picture popped up, but you know, she got a younger sister. Her name is uh, Dijati Kambunji, right? And she's competing at the uh, U-20 championships. She had a bad first round in the uh the 100 hurdles but she's competing there uh so definitely check that out here she is right here on the screen if you're looking at the screen so she's had a, fir- a bad first round in tokyo but she's coming to the u20 championships in nairobi and gonna compete then we have uh brume's younger brother sa brume the uh silver world championship silver medalist in the long jump she got bronze at the olympics and she has a younger brother called uh godson Ogan Brume, and he is competing in the uh, 100 and 200, I believe, at the championships. He's one of the favorites, actually, to win. So definitely check that out, especially if your fans there. But let's get into the uh, topic today, because I just know that some people really want to just see this, but I always got a shout out to other stuff. So here's a thing going on there. I think this looks very, very nice for it. It looks like a a, a movie right there, what they got um, the Aggies had this for so here's a thing mo. What do I think is gonna happen between her and a thing mo first, or uh, a thing mo and uh, and Jakob Ingebrigtsen? First, let's bring this up right here. Bring up the resume. We can't have a full out uh, presentation without bringing up the resume 
uh, with these athletes. So obviously she's 19 years old. That gives her plenty of time, but this is the race for who gets it first. Now, I don't like to hype up people too much. This is just a, what if I'm not even crowning her as she's a shoe in for, I'm going to say that based on what I've seen of her, she's very likely, but I got to say this disclaimer on the men's side, there have been a dime a dozen, literally Time after time after time, you think there's going to be an uh, an 800 runner, particularly on the men's side. And it's like, wow, this guy is really good on the youth level. Maybe he breaks the youth record. Maybe it doesn't. But uh, he comes up and then boom, either he gets in a car accident. That's been two a athletes, actually. And then they just never recover from the car accident or they get into a situation where they just get injured once. And then they're never the same or they just disappear. They blow up. It's just something happens. So we really got to keep this with a grain of salt that there have been time and time again. That's why I've doubted Donovan Brazier. I didn't even want to speak to him like, yo, he could get the world record. I'm like, do you know how hard that is to run two 50 second 400s back to back? I'm like, that's how that is. And so here we go. Here's the progression of where she is. Let's look at her 400 and then get her and compare her to the other athletes here because this is going to be the biggest thing. So we're looking at her progression. She's been really running uh, everything from the 200. Here you go. Uh, even before this, I don't know why it's just only counting these right here, but I guess it's just counting her more close to collegiate and pro career and close to that some of the high school but she's been running everything from the 200 all the way up to the 1500 since what like she was like eight or nine or something or even before that but she's definitely been competing in those things from a very young age so she has a lot of that experience here now look at this progression from 56 seconds 56.02 in 2016 now she's running at 49.57 and some people think that she can run an open 400 even faster than that because she just looks overly relaxed but after seeing a lot of her races she can look as relaxed as ever but that could be near her limit she's one of those athletes that does that and i'm going to show you in a picture that this 155 21 while she might have been able to run faster she was uh, a little bit tired after that and i can tell from her body language in her face more than it was from oh yeah it was tired but it wasn't extremely tired but it was the humidity you got to keep that in mind. It was very humid in Tokyo. So yeah, maybe she could have run faster, but in the humidity, that was at her upper limit or close to her limit. So without humidity, this is going to be very, very interesting uh, that's coming up. And you know that these two athletes are running at Prefontaine. So she goes from a 210-18. Now she's at a 155-21. Now uh, her 1500, she's run this year a 416.06. That's fair. That's not going to do anything on the women's uh, 1500 at all. Uh, as far as getting her in the place and for medals or anything like that, that's just, that won't be good enough. Right. In a mile, it's been a while since she did that. She's part of the uh, four by 400 meter relay. I think she did like a 48 something split on this one. Um, 316 85. Now I got to compare this to Jamila Crow. Oh my goodness. I had her name and I lost it. Kratol Chifalova. Kratosha Velova, right? Now, this woman right here, you know, she got a 49.99, 400. And for people that want to say anything, look, that was back on those other tracks. If we've improved tracks, which I can say that we've improved track technology from at least the 1980s. If you don't want to say, I, I will be one of those people. Now, if I say, oh, from year to year or this thing, major leaps like they're trying to say, Maybe I got a little about, bit of doubt on it, but if you compare from 1980 to right now, even Beijing, I'm going to say the tracks are a little bit better now. She is still running that 47.99 back in the 1983, okay, in Helsinki. So with that fitness, she ran a 153.98. Let's say that a thing Mo can run a 48 high. That means she's going to have to have better speed endurance and better uh aerobic capacity in order to break or match this world record, even get close to it. All right. We have to keep that in mind that, uh, uh, Jamila was actually a beast when it comes to, uh, these things even faster at the 200. Right. So she came from as a speed athlete and a thing Mo is going to come from 
probably a more distant side or balanced side. We're going to see how this uh, pans out because the 200 doesn't uh, seem to point to this 22 flat or anything like that. She actually broke, but this wind right here, the wind reading, to be fair, but still 22, under 22 on an older track. Man, put that to today. She probably could still do that with a less win, okay? With shoe technology and stuff, because there's just the natural physics of force and everything like that. I I will even admit that we've improved at least with that. Now, that's looking at a thing Mo here, right? Now we got to look at her results, how she does these things. Look, she's going first, 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 first. This was a collegiate, right? The SEC first, first, first. She got the 4957, which is the uh, NCAA uh, record now. So, and then people say, hey, if she's challenged, she can run faster. Okay, cool. Now, she got indoor first, first, and then second. All right? She can be beat in that uh, if you get out ahead of her and all of that good stuff. All right? Now, this is why I said if the 400 was run without being in lanes and it was a little bit different, we would see the 400 probably run kind of similar to the 800. That's why I'm like, if 800 stayed in lanes, it's getting so close to a sprint. I would, I, me, myself, I would start classifying it as sprint. I know technicalities and stuff. But here, outdoor, obviously the 157.73 that she did earlier in the season, knocked that stuff out. Then she didn't really have to do anything until what? Um, she didn't really run any 800s after that. After April, she didn't do any 800s until, here we go, the Olympic trials. Her coach had her like, hey, look, you're going to do the 400. You're going to get us some points. You run in the four by four. Hey, cool. Save your legs for it, I guess. Then 156 here. She got the American record now, 155.21. What do I think that she can run? First, let's look at Jakob Ingebrigtsen. And I'm going to pause this so I can bring this up. Now, here is uh, Jakob Ingebrigtsen. Let's bring up some uh, pictures of him so I can do the fairness of what uh, he said. He also stated that the 1500 is the most painful race that he's done. Like, and I'm like, okay, cool. This guy, he he's looking at it like that. The most painful. Did you know that he is the Olympic champion right now? He's got the European record, the Olympic record. Uh, I got to point that out to him, uh, to you all right here. Look at him. He is having the time, the blast of his life. It, he's just like, wow. Now I know he wanted to win in the 5,000 before. His brothers had set him up to win the 5,000 at the world championships. He had moved to the 1500. I think it's an excellent choice that he decided to do this. A lot of people say, Hey, maybe uh, he could have doubled if the Olympics had allowed for it, but look, he got that crisp gold medal. All right. That might not have happened had he doubled and then ran more in his legs. And then he looked actually pretty relaxed. Although, like I said, it was humid temperatures right there. Don't forget to like, and subscribe this channel because remember, that's what that is. Oh, yeah. One more thing I forgot to mention here. One more thing. One more thing. You are watching Head and Shoulders ATR, where we cover athletes, performances, and otherwise that are head and shoulders above the rest. And so don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And hopefully you just saw all of the images that I posted up on the screen of uh, Inga Britson. And if not, let me just roll these through very quickly. Bear with me for a while. I like to show the athletes here so that they can get this performance and everything. You see this? I'm going to roll it through one more time. Here's the crisp gold medal flag he holding up for Norway. So we got Vorholm to Inga Brinson and Inga Brinson to Vorholm. And here we go. Here he is. Guess how old he is? 20. 20. Wow. So he's got all of this for behind him, European champion, everything, Olympic gold medalist. Now let's just look here. Let's look at his progression. 400. He's running in 2017. I like to see his 400 right now, actually. Uh, 51 seconds. Let's look at his 800 from 152.6 down to a 146.44. I think that's pretty standard, pretty decent for a 1500 meter runner. They typically have that range somewhere in there. Let's look at his 1500 back in 20. 14. Look, if he's 20 right now, man, go back to 24. How young was he? Wow. Okay. Now he's, and he's done a 328.68. Don't forget that. That was back in uh, August of 2020. Uh, All right. At one of these Diamond League meets, right? Now he's done a little bit better, but he actually looked way more relaxed in the humidity compared to when he did this. Now I think he finished second or third. 
Now, he actually won this race 328-32 at Tokyo after some rounds. Because remember, 2020, they canceled the Olympics. No cha- There were no championships for that stuff. So what they did was they had different meets, all right? So 328-22, let's look at his mile. Now, he's going to be at Prefontaine, too, just like a thing Mo. He's going to be doing the uh, Prefontaine mile. Now, I wonder if – now, he's going. I'm certain he's going to do a, a new PR. I wonder if he's going to be able to pressure um, the American Centuries for an American record. I don't know if Centuries could beat him in this. I, I'm not even confident. So it's, it's only, I think, three or four other athletes that can beat Inga Brisson right now, and I don't see them – well, maybe not in a race. I got to look at the heat again. But 2017, 356.29. Now he's at a 351.30. Okay, that's going to be his weakest thing because if he could run a 358.32 in the um, in the uh, 1500, then his miles should be like 346 high at the worst, really. And then 343.13 is the uh, world record. Let's bring up Hisham El Garouj, which is – synonymous with the king of the mile that's what we call him the king of the mile Hisham El Garouj from Morocco man this was one of my favorite athletes I remember as I I was watching this uh guy he had tripped going into he should be a three-time Olympic champion really but he only got um he only got the gold once in the 1500 one of them he got tripped up he had lead had led the race or something the other another time he tripped again because he took over the lead or something like that. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness. From 96 to 2000. And then he finally got it in Athens. And it was just crazy. Like, especially he could have got in his prime. That's why I thought the 1500 uh, record, the Olympic record would have been way fast. It would have been 328, 327. He might have even, depending on how he would have ran and he, he would have got his first gold. Who knows? It might have even been a world record run there because if you go down to this world record, it's like 50 point for each lap, 50 point something for each lap. That's like running an 800 twice. So his best uh, was 147.18. Now, there have been people that have been faster than Hisham El Garouj over the 800. So don't let that really get to you too much, right? Uh, and then especially look at when he's – um had his world record here it was a year after he said that and then he's run very close to his world record multiple times so i would like to have seen his fitness after that but here you go so he's got a 147 18 this is comparing to inga brisson his 1000 i don't think we have a a a record for his 1000 do we personal best he hasn't run the 1000 so we can't look at that uh, so he's a little bit faster than Hisham El here. Uh, his 1500 is 326 flat. All right. Bernard Lagat is the second fastest man in history for uh, Kenya, then USA. The one mile is 343.13, which is what he's going to be, uh, Inga Brisson is going to be running here uh, over this Prefontaine Classic. The 2000, 444.79. Let's look at Inga Brisson's 450.0. One. All right. So he's a he's a bit better than him in that. The 3000, 72705, 72309, his 5000. I think Inga Brisson is better than him in this. Let's see. 1250.24. The reason why I'm bringing all of these up, see, 1248.45. So he's got the shorter distance faster than him, and he's got the the more endurance aspects faster than him. Now he's got to put it together and be able to run this uh, mile. Now, now that I've given the uh, resume for both of these athletes, 20 years old, representing Norway, then we got our 19-year-old representing the U.S. Let's go back on this. I'm going to go back a couple of times so we can get back to a thing Mo. And who is going to get it first? Who is going to get it first? Personally, he is closer on PR on paper. Now, she's 19 representing the United States. a thing Mo versus um, versus... Jakob Ingebrigtsen. This is going to be one of these big, big ones uh, clashing out, I swear. Now, on paper, uh, he's closer in the 1500 than he is on his mile. But like I said, if he were to run that in a mile, I would say 346 high. That means he's actually a little bit more than three, uh, three seconds out because it's 343.13. Let's give him 346 right now. 
He's going to run this two weeks after the Olympics. What do I give him? Who do I think is going to get it? I think a thing mode, this is going to be the first time that she has a pace setter because the collegiate meets, they don't have pace setters. So I wonder if the pace setter goes out in such a, a, a pace and it's not humid. Now, remember, it was very hot in Oregon during the uh, USA trials. Global warming is out here kicking our butts, our backsides. I experienced it here in Houston so much. Now, since it's not humid, a thing Mo is actually running in this race. Uh, Edgar Brinson said that the 1500, a.k.a. also the mile, it's only 109 more meters or whatever, uh, is one of the hardest or the hardest race he's run. I'm going to have to give it to a thing Mo slightly, slightly, even though it's harder to drop those two and a half seconds that she's got off of the world record compared to uh, Inga Brisson, because he's essentially running only slightly slower than the 800 world record twice over. Like, that's what he's doing. That's why that 1500 also is going to be harder. It's harder than it seems on that. Hisham El Garouge was no slouch, but I think if Inga Brisson breaks the world record, he might actually skip the 325s altogether and go into the 324s. Now, that will be crazy, um, but we're that's yet to be seen. Now, when it comes to a thing, Mo, I think she's going to break the 153 range. She might get into the 152 uh, high to mid. That's where I think she's going to get into. And that'll be crazy, especially if she has the pace setter and they go out and they said, we're going to go out in a uh, more so world record pace. They come out in something that's like a 50, man, I say a 54 come out on that first lap. That way they get some room because two 54s together adds up to a 148. All right. Two 54s put together is a 148. That means that'll get her four second drop. Typically, what the women are between four and six seconds, depending on how their ability is, whereas the guys are a little bit less than that, what, three, uh, three point something to four something. So if she could keep it within that four second drop range, she'll be setting herself up for a 152 because her second lap will be about a much slower than that. So it'll be a 40 or 54 something. Maybe if she could do more even 55. 55 will be 150, right? That means she'll have a 57 on the second lap. Instead, I like to see her, it could be a 58 on the second lap if she comes out just a second sooner. That gives her a little bit more breathing room. I see that she has a good speed endurance, and I think she can handle that based on she might be able to run a 48 plus second uh, lap. She's got the pace setter in front of her, which back then, even with these world records, yeah, they had some pace setters there and everything like that. But look, at Helsinki, was that not a uh, championship right there that she did it at? So that would have been no pace setter. So there's another advantage here. Uh, El Garouge had a pace setter here. Now, when it comes to Inga Brisson, like I said, I think personally that it can happen first. I'm not going to say Prefontaine is the, the meat uh, that she's going to do it, but the shape that she's in right now, they got plenty of years ahead. I think that is a pretty decent likelihood. That if it's not the world record, we're going to see a 154 point if she's not extremely tired from running the Olympics. What do you guys think? Do you guys agree? Disagree? What do you guys want to see on this Prefontaine meet? And I mean, every one of these events, I didn't see the 200 start list yet, though. But every one of these events, it seems like that they've released a start list. They've been trying to get the Olympic medalist. They said it literally on purpose to come out to this Prefontaine meet. They want this to be a rock star uh, uh, pulse pounding event here. Now that's not even going to be me including the women's 1500. I'm just including these because these are two young athletes. Whereas in the women's 1500, I think the world record could go down because she's less than a second away from the world record. I think a half, less than a half a second away from the world record. Put a pace setter there instead of at the Olympics or whatever, where she set a PR. Oh, shoot, that's going down most likely, right? Now, there's no guarantee that these things happen. I'll be still satisfied with just seeing a good race. I don't want to hype these up too much, all right? We got to temper our expectations a little bit because in track and field, once we overhype things and they don't deliver, people's perspective is ruined, right? That's all it is. It's, it's ruined. 
So between these two athletes, I'm going to congratulate them for being so young and so talented, regardless if we're running on slightly better tracks or anything like that. Because if you really think about it, all the other people are running on the same tracks, older than them, uh, slightly older than them. And they can't get near these times or they can't look as smooth as running these times. So at least in that pr perspective, they are at least that much more talented than the rest of the field. So let me know what you all think here. Comment in the comment section below. Join our Patreon because we've about to be expanding out uh, to different areas in, like I said, animated races and everything. I know it sounds like a broken record, but I always got to let people know because we're going to break down things. Uh, and even try to show some races and then break them down in live, uh, quote unquote, live fashion about how these things go, especially it can help athletes as they're learning to compete. And we talk about how to market yourself as an athlete too, whether it's a pro, the uh, masters, the youth, whatever it is, because at the end of the day, I'm trying to make sure that you guys, if you're an athlete, you get money. Same thing can happen if you're a coach. There are different ways you can market yourself out. So if you want to uh, go into that, we're going to talk about those different things. So talk to you all later. Peace out. And don't forget to check out the U20 coverage that I'm going to do. And just check out the championships in general. World Athletics, go to their YouTube. They're hosting live videos there. Peace.